the stomach and end that should be done. That is tissue paper junction. That is the first part of the line. The palate part of the stomach empties into the first part of the liver. First part of the intestine that has the duodenum. And the amount of material which are released from the stomach into the duodenum is being controlled by again the valve present in the pylori. So it is a mechanism, physiological mechanism, in which the amount of small amount of food from the stomach goes into the first part of the small intestine that is duodenum. And the pylori has got a pylori act on it, surrounded by the uh, smooth muscle, that like mechanism, which helps in the release of the stomach content. This is again a diagram uh, which we can easily see that this is the stomach and this is the pylorus of the stomach. And from the pylorus starts the small gut, that is small intestine. But this part, which is somewhat C shaped, somewhat C shaped, is the part known as the duodenum. And from here, that is after the transverse mesocolon, this part of this area is the, is the jejunum, and again the rest of it, till here, the ilium. So, duodenum, jejunum, and ilium, they are the part which forms the small intestine. The, the characteristic features of duodenum is that this part starts from the stomach, it is moved by this part of the small intestine, it has a different relation which we talk soon. So the first part of the duodenum, that is the first part of the duodenum is started, it is about, again the duodenum is divided into two parts. And uh, we will talk about them, but the first and the shortest, that is five centimeter part small intestine, it is also the widest and most fixed part. When I say it is the most fixed part, it means that the duodenum is a retrograde structure. Because any structure which is mobile is intraperitoneal. The structure is fixed, it means that it is retroperitoneal. So let's see uh, whether the duodenum is intraperitoneal or it is retroperitoneal. It is C-shaped. The duodenum is C-shaped and the C-shape fits around the head of the pancreas. If you see the first diagram, you can see that this is the pancreas and this C-shaped structure is the duodenum. So it is a C-shaped structure which has the concavity of this C shape has the head of the pancreas inside. Uh, begins at the pylorus of the stomach on the right side and ends at the duodeno digital junction on the left side. So it starts on the right side of the abdominal cavity, in the upper quadrant of the abdominal cavity, that is from the pylorus, and it ends on the left side, that is the left upper quadrant, at duodeno digital junction. The duodenum is divisible into divisible into four. So we have four parts of the system, and these four parts are basically due to the structural uh, position of the of the duodenum. It is you cannot say that the four parts have a different function. The function remains the same, but it is the structural uh, structural attachment of the duodenum to specific part of the abdomen. So it has got four parts. Now for the, this is another diagram where you can see a C-shaped structure. This C-shaped structure is actually the duodenum. It is start from the stomach, the stomach this is a pylori. So A is a pyloric part and then from B, C, D, e, and finally E. So all these parts that is from B, C, D, e, and E are the part of the duodenum. It is C-shaped. And again, the, the concavity of this C-shaped structure fits the head of the pancreas. So again, in this diagram, this C-shaped structure, this C-shaped structure is the duodenum, and this has got four parts, which we have discussed right now. The first part of the superior part. The first part is on the superior part, and it is approximately five centimeter in length, and it lies on the anterior rectal to the body of L1. So the first is the superior part. Before now see this, this diagram. In this diagram, we have the lumbar vertebra L1, L2, and L3. And this C-shaped structure is the structure of the duodenum, which is divisible into three parts. First part, second part, third part, and fourth part. And the first part, second part, and third part are related to the lumbar vertebra, are related to the lumbar vertebra, while the fourth part is also related, but it is also known as ascending part. And it is related to the abdominal cavity. 
so depending upon the position of the different parts of this duodenum we level them into superior part then we have the first part then the second part the third part and the fourth part so have this in mind so first part of the superior part is short it is about 5 cm and lies anterior lateral to the body of l1 so if a question comes in the exam that first part of the duodenum is related to l1 l2 l3 l4 the correct option is l1 the descending part this is longer part the second part the descending is longer part and it is about 7 to 10 cm in length and it descends the right side of l1 to l3 so l1 and l3 vertebra l1 l2 and l3 l3 vertebrae they are related on the right side of the second part of the duodenum and this is known as the descending part of the duodenum the third part is horizontal it is about 6 to 8 cm in length and it crosses the l3 vertebrae so it crosses the l3 and then the fourth part again known as ascending part which is about a deep short one 5 cm in length and begins at the left of the l3 vertebrae and it rises superiorly now it is something that first the first part descends okay first part starts run horizontally then the second part descends then the third part again horizontal while the fourth part it ascends so it is in form of c shape which have curve is first horizontal then descending then horizontal and then ascending and the fourth part rise superiorly as far as the superior border of l2 vertebra so you can see the l1 is related to the first part the l2 that is that is the second part is related to the lumbar one lumbar two and lumbar three vertebra the second part which is known as the descending part and the third part is again horizontal which is in relation to l3 vertebrae while vertebra while the fourth one is ascending with because it ascends towards l2 so these are the position of the three four parts of the duodenum you can see the first part the second part the third part and the fourth part again we have b is the first part c is the second part d is the third part and e is the fourth part and the e is related it, it ascends from l3 towards l2 but it is related to this great vessel known as the aorta so aorta is related to the fourth part now the after the part the duodenum shows flexure that is a curve so we have a superior duodenal flexor we have inferior duodenal flexor and we have duodenal duodenal flexor these flexures are the bends the bends which are present on the path on the structure of the duodenum the first is superior duodenal duodenal flexor the second is inferior duodenal duodenal flexor and the third one is duodenal duodenal flexor so duodenal flexures don't have or each do a duodenal duodenal flexor when it ends into the jejunum so ye hamare duodenal flexures hote hain now we come to the first part which is about 5 cm and it is horizontal first 2 cm of the superior part of the duodenum immediately distal pylor has a mesenteric shape and is normal now here is a tricky thing the first part of the duodenum up to 2 cm is intraperitoneal because the lesser omentum and the greater omentum which are attached to the lesser curvature and the greater curvature extend somewhat to the pyloric region and it covers the first 2 cm of the first part of the duodenum that is superior part after this the duodenum is retroperitoneal so that's why this first 2 cm is a mobile one and it has a mesentery most movable part of the duodenum and behave more of a stomach than the duodenum and internally this is the side where the duodenal ulcers are more common the acidic content is more common because uh, it is lies in the pyloric but some of the acid still into the this part that is the first part so it is more vulnerable to the development of duodenal ulcers and it is the site which is uh, the mobile site because it is intraperitoneal the first two. now comes the second part of the duodenum that is the descending part of the duodenum and this is longer that is about 7 to 10 cm in length this is extra peritoneal and begins at the superior duodenal flexure which we already discussed the flexure is superior duodenal flexure or inferior duodenal flexure 
So it begins at the superior gluteal flexure opposite L1 OJT and it passes vertically downward. As it passes downward, there are certain structures which lies posterior to it. The rhythm descends downward and there are certain structures which lies posterior to the second part of the duodenum. It includes the hilum of the right kidney along the right side of the vertebral column in para. So para vertebral gutter are the two gutters to which the descending column and descending column descend. So the, the, this part, which is the uh, descending part of the duodenum of the second part, uh, retro peritoneum and it has a posterior relation with the hilum of the right kidney. It ends in the inferior duodenal flexure. So we have superior duodenal flexure, start with the second part and ends in the inferior duodenal flexure opposite the lower border of L3 vertebrae. So L3 vertebrae, they start from uh, L1, descends down from the start from superior duodenal flexure, vertically downwards, and in the inferior duodenal flexure opposite the lower border of L3. Major now, this part of the duodenum has an important thing, important structure open to this part, and that is it contains major duodenal flagella. And what we mean by major duodenal flagella, we can say that on the, the second part of the duodenum, on its posterior medial wall, has opening for the bile duct and the pancreatic duct. So, bile duct and pancreatic duct they open in the second part of the duodenum. That is the second part of the duodenum. The second part of the duodenum in this diagram, go on the left side, we have got two ducts a bile duct and a main pancreatic duct. And these two ducts they open in the second part of the duodenum in the major duodenal papillae. That is a major duodenal papillae in opening. And that is a major duodenal papillae. And we love better, we get it is guarded by a valve known as we love better. So, the second part of the dono duct that is the common bile duct and the main pancreatic duct, which opens in the major duodenum papillae, open in the second part of the duodenum, second part of the duodenum, or the location there, posterior medial part of the second part of the duodenum. The most important question is, which comes sometimes in the exam that the second that the common bile duct and the main pancreatic duct opens in. First part, second part, third part, or fourth part. So it opens in the second part of the duodenum on the posterior medial wall and the major duodenal pathology. So side to get the major duodenal pathology, Jan you don't open it. Yeah, we are taking the main pancreatic duct and main common bile duct is open in the second part of the duodenum, that is the descending part of the duodenum. Yeah, we are taking it, Jan you don't open on the bile duct, the main pancreatic duct, you don't make the banana in a part of pancreatic angula. They open in the major duodenal papillae, and this is guarded by a valve known as anterior bladder. The third part, it is about 10 centimeters in length, and it is again a long part, and it extends from the inferior duodenal flexure to front of the aorta at L3 vertebrae. So it is extension from it is again a horizontal part. It is again a horizontal part. But it extends from the inferior duodenal flexure up to the front of the aorta at the level of L3. It runs transversely to the left, passing over the anterior vena cava, the aorta, and L3 vertebra. So, may I have to that the aorta has an important relation with the fourth part and with the third part. So, it passes over, it crosses anteriorly to inferior vena cava, aorta, and L3 vertebra. It is crossed anteriorly, that is the third part of the duodenum is crossed anteriorly by superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein and the root of the mesenteric duodenum and ileum. We will discuss that duodenum and ileum are again part of the small intestine and these two parts, duodenum and ileum, are intraperitoneal attached to the posterior abdominal wall by the root of the mesenteric or the mesenteric. And we have already discussed that mesentery extend from the duodenal duodenal junction to the ileocecal junction extend karta hai. Wo aage hum dekhenge. Lekin jo third part hai, third part ki relation hai ki it crosses anteriorly. It crosses. It is crossed. It is present in front of the inferior vena cava, the aorta, and the L3 vertebra. 
and it is crossed anteriorly by the superior mediastinal artery and mediastinal you know samajh le ke agar main third party baat karu which is running vertically or horizontally then the structure which lies posterior to it are the inferior venicum aorta and the anterior venicum aur iske aage jo structure hoga wo hoga superior mediastinal artery and superior mediastinal and the root of the mesenteric artery and this one so third part ke niche inferior venicum aorta and L3 body is the aage super superior mediastinal vessels and uh, veins and arteries fourth part is again a small small part and this is the part which is ascending part so it ascend from L3 towards L2 so extend from from front of the aorta to duodeno duodenal flexure so it extend from the front of the aorta to duodeno duodenal flexure that is Here the region of ends and the region of start. So small part, 2.5 centimeter. We jump third part. Then the third part comes in front of the aorta. Then it continues further. So you guys can imagine that third part, when the aorta is coming up, after that, it further extends to the left side. So that part, which is which is again a, a part ascending upward towards the region, is the fourth part. So it is the ascending part. it runs superiorly along the left side of the aorta to reach the inferior border of the body of the pancreas and it curves anteriorly to join the duodenum at the duodeno duodenal junction and one important thing about the fourth part is that this part that is the duodenal duodenal flexure which is in fact the fourth part and from this part the duodenum starts there is a there is a support and this support is known as suspensory ligamentum ridis so suspensory ligamentum ridis is basically a support extending from the dome of the diaphragm to the duodenal duodenal flexure in fact it holds the duodenum this part of the duodenum towards the posterior abdominal wall so aap ye keh sakte hain ki the right cross of the diaphragm and the right cross of the diaphragm gives fibers which are skeletal muscle in nature gives fibers towards the duodenal duodenal flexure and these fibers run when they reach at this area and then the smooth muscles which are a part of the duodenum also intermingle so kya hota hai ki combination hoti hai between the skeletal muscle coming from the right cross of the diaphragm and the smooth muscle which are coming from the muscular extern of the duodenum they merge and they form a support and that support is present between the dome of the diaphragm and the duodenal duodenal flexure and this support is known as suspensory ligaments of ridis so suspensory ligaments of ridis kya hai it holds this flexure in its position blood supply that is again uh, there are two sources of supply one is from the ciliate trunk and other is from the superior mediastinum actually what happens the abdominal aorta has the three known important branches the ciliate trunk the superior mediastinal artery and the inferior mediastinum Entire abdominal content is supplied via this arterial system. The ciliate trunk, the superior mesenteric, and the inferior mesenteric. Now the duodenum is supplied by branches from the ciliate trunk and the branches of the superior mesenteric artery. The ciliate trunk, which is the first part of the abdominal aorta, has different branches. But one of the branches is the gastroduodenal artery. and its branch on the superior ventricular duodenal artery supplies the duodenum proximal to the entry of the bile duct into the descending part of the duodenum agar aap ab is sentence ko aap ke we have discussed that the second part of the duodenum on its posterior medial wall is entry to the ventricular duct into the common bile at the major duodenal papillae a major duodenal papillae se upar jitna bhi area hoga wo first part mein aur second part mein hoga they are supplied by the ciliate trunk via gastroduodenal artery or gastroduodenal artery ki bhi branches se superior ventricular duodenum na that supplies the area above the major duodenal papillae or uske baad the superior mesenteric artery which is again the second branch arises from the abdominal aorta through its branches known as inferior ventricular duodenum artery which supply the duodenum distal to the entry of the bile duct मतलब ये कि जो मेजर ड्यूडल पैपिलरी से नीचे जो एरिया है दैट इज 
below the antelope battle, below the opening of the bile duct, that area supplied by the superior mesenteric artery through its branches known as inferior pancreato duodenal artery. So, after you have the superior pancreato duodenal artery, which is a branch of the gastro duodenal artery, or in fact, if you have any candidate, which is a branch of the coming from the pelvic trunk, while the inferior pancreato duodenal artery, which is a branch of the superior mesenteric artery, and superior mesenteric artery is also coming from the transiara, or the abdominal area, which is the arise. अभी तमाम जो चीजें हैं इससे ये ट्रंक की सप्लाई कहाँ से कहाँ तक है अभी डॉक्टर साहब आपको कंप्लीट करा रहे हैं एम्ब्रियोलॉजी जब आप एम्ब्रियोलॉजी करेंगे डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हाइंड गट मिड गट फोर गट मिड गट एंड हाइंड गट देन यू विल एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट व्हाट आर व्हाट इज द ब्लड सप्लाई टू द फोर गट एरिया सो ऑल दो स्ट्रक्चर व्हिच राइजेस फ्रॉम द फोर गट आर सप्लाइड बाय द सिलियर ट्रंक सो द राइजेस फ्रॉम द मिड गट राइजेस फ्रॉम द सुपीरियर मिडेंट्रिक एंड दोस व्हिच आर डेवलप्ड फ्रॉम द हाइंड गट दे आर सप्लाइड बाय द इंफीरियर मिडेंट्रिक आर So it is, it is, it is actually uh, something which you have to come when you will do the uh, embryology. So this finishes the duodenum. Then we come to the jejunum and ileum, which is the part of the small intestine, the second and the third part. The second part of the small intestine, the jejunum, and it begins at duodenal jejunal fracture. If you look at this diagram, you can be able to see two uh, colors. The so this color, the, the duodenum ends here. The duodenum ends on the left side. At the middle, jejunal junction, and from here, this blue area is known as the jejunum. And from this part, that is at the lower quadrant, the green part it starts, which is the ileum, and it ends at the cecum. So the small intestine, the second part, jejunum, which starts at the middle, jejunal flexure, and it it is an intraperitoneal. Up to small intestine, the remaining part, that is the third part, and the Second and third part, duodenum or ileum, the intraperitoneal. Okay, so two centimeter of duodenum is intraperitoneal. Rest of the duodenum is intraperitoneal. Now the jejunum and ileum they are intraperitoneal. The third part of the small intestine, the ileum, ends at the ileocecal junction, where the union of its terminal parts ends in the cecum, and cecum is the first part of the large intestine at the ileocecal junction. So, we have a jejunum and ileum to anatomy. Samaya. The location here, right? If you have a four quadrant, that is the upper right quadrant, upper left quadrant, upper lower right quadrant, lower left quadrant. These are the quadrants we use. Them. Inko ab main abnormal regions mein divide kar sakte hain. Right hypochondrium, maybe calcium, left hypochondrium, ठीक है ना lumbar, ablator, left lumbar, right lumbar, hypogastric. These are the. लेकिन आसानी के तौर पे quadrants में भी हम divide करते हैं. Upper right quadrant, upper left quadrant, lower right quadrant, lower left quadrant. So we can see two colors: the blue color and the yellow color or an orange color. The blue color is the ileum, and the, this orange color is the ileum. So jejunum and ileum, they they totally the length of combined length of jejunum and ileum is 67 meter long. Okay, and approximately two fifth constitutes the jejunum, and three fifths constitutes the ileum. So two fifth Of six to seven meter long small intestine made up of jejunum and three fifth of the intraperitoneal section of the small intestine made up of ileum. Most of the jejunum lies in the left upper quadrant. Most of the jejunum lies in the left upper quadrant, and most of that is of the intracolic compartment. Meaning that the transfer of the colon to over, whatever area of the abdomen is, they are in the supracolic compartment. और जो भी एरिया इन ट्रांसफर यूजो कॉलन के नीचे मौजूद है दे आर नोन एज इंफ्रा कॉलिक कंपार्टमेंट सो जेजुनम एंड एलियम आर द पार्ट ऑफ द इंफ्रा कॉलिक कंपार्टमेंट बट द जेजुनम लाइज इन द लेफ्ट अपर क्वाड्रेंट ऑफ द इंफ्रा कॉलिक कंपार्टमेंट वेयर एज मोस्ट ऑफ द एलियम लाइज इन द राइट लोअर क्वाड्रेंट ऑफ द इंफ्रा कॉलिक कंपार्टमेंट सो अगर कोई पेशेंट कंप्लेन करता है लेफ्ट अपर क्वाड्रेंट से और क्वाड्रेंट से मोस्ट प्रोबेबली जेजुनम के इन्वॉल्वमेंट और अगर वो दिखाए पेन या कोई भी ट्रबल ऑन द राइट लोअर क्वाड्रेंट इन मोस्टली एलियम विल बी इन्वॉल्व इट इज इट इज फॉर द क्लिनिशियन टू डिसाइड प्लस द हिस्ट्री कैन टेल नाउ बोथ ऑफ दिस स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज द एलियम एंड द जेजुनम इन द एलियम दे आर बीइंग सराउंडेड बाय मिजेंट्री एंड द मिजेंट्री इज अगेन द मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ पेरिटोनियम एंड दिस मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ पेरिटोनियम इज फॉर्म द मिजेंट्री Extend in the form of fold. 
and this fold extends from the duodenal jejunal flexure of the left side that is at the level of L2 up to the pleocecal junction that is the upper end of the right side sacroiliac joint. This mesentery extends, and the free margin of the mesentery gives attachment to the coils of jejunum and duodenum. So the mesentery, the root of mesentery, or the mesentery is the peritoneal attachment to the jejunum and duodenum. And it extends from the duodenal jejunal junction or flexure from on the left side of the, of the L2 up to the ileocecal junction at the upper end of the right sacroiliac joint. Now, we already know that this root of mesentery crosses many structures. So, it crosses a structure which is crossed by the root, that is the third part of the duodenum, it crosses, that is, the root lies behind these structures. The third part of the duodenum, the abdominal aorta, the inferior vena cava, the right vertebral vein, uh, the right ureter, and the so they all lie posterior to it. They all lie posterior to the root of the mesentery. So, root of the mesentery is crossed. It crosses the third part of the duodenum, the abdominal aorta, the inferior vena cava, right vertebral vessel, right ureter. This is important, important uh, picture. And you must know what are the structures which are crossed by the root of the mesentery. It can be a part of your question in the uh, Now, crossly, mainly the function of the small intestine is for absorption. For absorption, histology, we will see that the, the mucosa contains of long folds, which are known as, which are folds of the, the mucosa, which are known as plyta. So, there are a number of folds which give a folded appearance to the Jejunum and ileum and they are as fold or circular fold or a fly pattern. Now, grossly, there is a difference, grossly, not histologically. So, grossly, there is a difference between jejunum and ileum. And these differences are length. The jejunum is shorter, the ileum is longer because go two fifth or the three fifth. The jejunum, the diameter, more wider in jejunum, it is more narrower in ileum. The wall. The jejunum is more thicker because it contains more plyta circulari. That is the fold, the circular fold. They are more in number, much in number in the jejunum as compared to ileum. So they are thinner. Appearance, since it is more vascular, so it appears darker, dark red. While the ileum is light red because it is less vascular. Vessels, now, the vessel, it has got higher, less arcade. The vascular arcades when we have this kind of arcades in some other day. The other matter is that this mesentery border of the small intestine, mesentery border, which we call it, where the mesentery attaches to the wall of the intestine. This is called mesentery border, and its opposite is the anti-mesentery border. This mesentery border is this gives attachment to the peritoneum, that is the mesentery, and this mesentery under is the ramification of blood vessels. And these blood vessels, which are the branches of collateral artery, collateral artery, or the duodenal artery, or jejunal artery, they make an arterial arcade. This is called the arterial anastomosis. Or the arterial anastomosis that enters within the wall of the small intestine. So, this mesentery it provides a pathway. Now, what is that? The jejunum is in the arcades. They have a high and less arcade. The number of arcades, that is the number of arterial flexes are less in the jejunum, but they are they are richly supplied. The supply is strong, and that's why it's more vascular. Or when you compare it to ileum, it has low and more arcades, short terminal branches. In Kendar Kyawata, the high branches are quite thicker and they form less ramification. On the whole, her artery is more calvin than that. लेकिन जब हम एलियम के अंदर आर्टिकल आर्केज को देखते हैं, शॉर्ट लूप ज़्यादा होते हैं। They are more short loop, they are more ramification, लेकिन जो डायमीटर और कैलिबर है वो वो कम है तो as compared to the jejunal vascular arcades. This is again a difference between these two. Mesentric fat, the fat which is deposited in the mesentric part, mesentery which is attached to the wall of the intestine. In case of the jejunum, it is Small, less amount of fat is deposited in the mesentery. While in case of the ileum, more amount of fat is deposited in the mesentery border of the ileum. 
and the finally which is very important uh, distinguishing feature that the aggregation of lymphoid tissue in the digenin is less while the aggregation of the lymphoid tissue in the ileum is more and this more collection of lymphoid tissue are in the form of patches which are present in the ileum and they have got a specific name known as pyers patches inko hum kehte hain pyers patches and these pyers patches are characteristic feature of characteristic histological feature of the ileum agar aapko pyers patches nazar aa jaye iska matlab hai you are 100% seeing ileum theek hai to aur grossly bhi nazar aa jata hai so we can say these are the difference between digenum and ileum length diameter ball appearance blood vessel dendritic tract and lymphoid tissue on the basis of this we uh, divide the digenum and ileum into two grossly different areas now comes the blood supply in the lymphatic drainage or an innervation of the digenum and ileum at innervation ko yaad rakhiye sympathetic supply hai और पैरासिम्पैथेटिक सप्लाई दोनों ऑटोनॉमिक सप्लाई है तो सर तो पैरासिम्पैथेटिक सप्लाई है दैट इज इट इज सप्लाइड बाय द ऑटोनॉमिक नर्व फ्लेक्सेस अगर ऑटोनॉमिक में अगर पैरासिम्पैथेटिक है तो वेगल से सप्लाई हो और अगर सिंपैथेटिक है तो जो गैंगलियाज हैं जो कि हमारे जिसको हम प्री वर्टिब्रल गैंगलियाज कहते हैं दे सप्लाई द सिंपैथेटिक कंपोनेंट हां जो ब्लड सप्लाई है दैट इज द आर्टरी सप्लाई इन ब्रांचेस ऑफ द सुपीरियर मेजेंट्रिक आर्टरी एंड द लोअर पार्ट ऑफ द इलियम इज आल्सो सप्लाइड बाय द इलियो कोलिक आर्टरी सो सुपीरियर मेजेंट्रिक आर्टरी बेसिकली सप्लाइज द इलियम एंड एंड द जिजेनम ऑफ इलियम एंड जिजेनम ब्रांच द वेंस आर अगेन कोरिस्पोंड टू द आर्टरी द सुपीरियर मेजेंट्रिक वेन इलियो कोलिक वेन दे दे अल्टीमेटली सारे वेन वेन होते हैं टोटल वेन और सुपीरियर मेजेंट्रिक वेन और स्क्लेनिंग वेन मिलके पोर्टल वेन बनता है तो होल ऑफ द जीआरटी की जो वेनस वेन है दे अल्टीमेटली ड्रेन टू द पोर्टल सिस्टम तो वो हम बाद में डिस्कस करेंगे आर्टरी सप्लाई फ्रॉम द सुपीरियर मेजेंट्रिक आर्टरी बट सम पार्ट ऑफ द इलियम इज ऑल्सो सप्लाइड बाय द इलियो कोलिक आर्टरी विच आर फ्रॉम द सुपीरियर मेजेंट्रिक आर्टरी लिम्फेटिक ड्रेनेज लिम्फ वेसल्स पासेस थ्रू इंटरमीडिएट मेजेंट्रिक लिम्फ नोड्स और वो सुपीरियर मेजेंट्रिक लिम्फ नोड्स हैं देयर इज मेजेंट्रिक लिम्फ नोड्स हैं So that is a different topic. Entirely different topic. It is from all the same. Karein ke that is the lymphatic supply of the nerves. I have earlier told you that the parasympathetic, which is by the vagus nerve, sympathetic is through the yeah, pre-vertebral ganglia. So ultimately, if you remember, we have two entire plexus modules. My entire plexus and business plexus, which are being controlled by the parasympathetic. So those entire nervous system, which are being controlled by the parasympathetic, 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 and it is being controlled by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerve system this is how the blood supply the arteries and arteries they get which are being present from to the mesenteric border of the digenum and the mesenteric border of the ileum okay yahan tak inki supply ho rahi hai and they are the branches which is coming from the superior mesenteric artery is the superior mesenteric veins in area se drain karte hain the last part of the ileum is the ileocecal junction that where the ileum ends into the system so usko kehte hain ileocecal junction iske baad small intestine khatam and then we have a part of the large intestine starting from the cecum ascending colon transverse colon and descending colon so ileocecal junction that is the terminal part of the ileum enter the large intestine at the junction of the cecum with the ascending colon so means provided with porous or lip which is known as ileocecal valve iske more detail hum karenge jab we do the इंफॉर्मेशन वजह से लीक हो जाए एंड दे कॉजेस इंफ्लेमेशन ऑफ द अपेंडिक्स सो विद दिस वी कम टू द प्रेजेंटेशन एंड द प्रेजेंटेशन वी कम टुडे द कॉलेजन सी दीस पार्ट्स ऑफ द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन दैट यू डोंट डू दिस एनीम एंड थिंक ऑफ एंड अगेन कोरिलेट विद दिस प्रेजेंटेशन और विद द बुक व्हिच यू हैव नाउ इट इज ओपन फॉर डिस्कशन इफ यू गॉट एनी आंसर्स टू क्वेश्चन टू आस्क यू कैन आस्क
पचास अगर आप इनको ओपन कर दें तो मैं इससे पूछ ओके स्टूडेंट्स आप अपना हैंड रेस कर सकते हैं इन केस वी हैव एनी क्वेश्चन और आप चैट पे भी लिख सकते हैं क्वेश्चन और एक लेकिन होता यह है कि अगर ड्यूरेनम के दो पार्ट ड्यूरेनम का एक पार्ट है व्हिच इज नोन एज द व्हिच इज द पार्ट अबव द अबव द एंट्रेंस ऑफ द पैंक्रियाटिक कार्ड सो दिस पार्ट इज कंसिस्ट ऑफ द फर्स्ट पार्ट एंड द पार्ट ऑफ द सेकंड पार्ट इज सप्लाइड बाय द ब्रांचेस ऑफ द सुपीरियर बाय द ब्रांच ऑफ सीलियर ब्रांच सो गैस्ट्रो ड्यूरेनल आर्टरी के ब्रांच इज सुपीरियर पैंक्रियाटो ड्यूरेनल कार्ड और जो ये वाला पार्ट इट इज सिचुएटेड बिलो द ओपनिंग ऑफ द बाइल डक्ट एंड द पैंक्रियाटिक डक्ट इट इज बीइंग सप्लाइड बाय इंफीरियर पैंक्रियाटो ड्यूरेनल कार्ड सो ये आर्टरी सप्लाई हो रही है व्हिच कम फ्रॉम द सुपीरियर पैंक्रियाटिक कार्ड सो फर्स्ट पार्ट और सेकंड पार्ट की सप्लाई इस तरह होती है कि जो ब्लड सप्लाई है दैट इज सीरियस ट्रंक सुपीरियर पैंक्रियाटो ड्यूरेनल आर्टरी वो ये को सप्लाई करे और इट अबव द ओपनिंग ऑफ द बाइल और इंफीरियर पेंक्रियाटो ड्यूरेनल आर्टरी व्हिच इज अ ब्रांच ऑफ द सुपीरियर पेंक्रियाटिक आर्टरी सप्लाई टू द दैट पार्ट व्हिच इज डिस्टल टू द एंट्री ऑफ द बाइल डक्ट मतलब वो पार्ट जो के इंफीरियर है टू द ओपनिंग ऑफ द बाइल डक्ट ओके व्हाट इज द टोटल लेंथ ऑफ द स्मॉल इट 6 7 मीटर so what are the clinical signals for it the clinical signals in small intestine are so many it is there are certain diseases which occurs in the small intestine which result in malabsorption then we talk this of histology there may be ulcers okay there may be autoimmune disorders there may be obstruction there may be perforation so different clinical condition may arise in with the involvement of the small intestine thank you for the thank you all of you